Today we're talking about what I call the underdog of the Canon 35mm SLR T-Series. There are a bunch of cameras in the T-Series. There's a T50, a T70, and the T90. After the T90 came out, they came out with the T60. Why? And I well, because this is what's known as the student camera. This is a camera that was made for that particular educational market. That camera's not made by Canon. You know, that's not made by Canon. All I have to say about that is so what? <laughs> And it's the only Canon in the series that is aperture priority and not shutter priority. And I'm going to explain that. It's like me driving a uh, Jeep Renegade and finding out that the motor is a Fiat motor made in Italy. Who cares? <laughs> Canon throughout history has been known for the sports figures promoting the cameras. In all of their vintage ads, they all promote of how fast you can capture all the action. With this particular camera, you set your shutter to A, auto, and then your lens you take out of auto, and now you can make a decision of what aperture you want to shoot at. And to me, that's important because, you know, if you're outside and you want to get your subject in focus but the background a little blurry, you could do that by setting your lens to f1.8, the shutter speed on auto, it'll choose the shutter speed automatically. In your eyepiece, you will see a, like a light that tells you that you have a proper exposure. Now, you can also set everything to auto with this camera. AA, by everything being in automatic, then all you do is like focus and shoot. It's a very lightweight, compact camera. It takes the Canon FD lenses, so you can swap out your lens with any other lens in the FD series, and there are so many of them on eBay.com or go over to Used Photo Pro and pick up uh, a used lens, it's terrific. This camera only works if there's batteries in it. You cannot use this camera without a battery, it will not fire. Open up the bottom here, and this camera takes what's known as two LR44 button cells. They're 1.5 volt each, and they're easy to find and they're inexpensive. With film, if you're new to film photography, you will pick a roll of film. Let's say you bought a roll of FPP black and white Frankenstein. This is a 200 ISO film. So the first thing you would do is set your camera ISO right here to 200. To load your film, this is your rewind that rewinds your film. You will lift this up gently and then pop the back by keep lifting. Whoa. There it is. You would load your film in there. Put this down, the, put the plunger down. You will drag your film over to the slot over here, and then you'll put your film, <laughs> put your film in the nub, right? And then you will cock your shutter. And then once you're confident, I'm pretty confident, that your film is being grabbed, you'll close the back, and then you will push your film Till it reads the number one. Number one! Once your film is loaded, you're not going to open the back because you'll expose your film to light. Your, the film is light sensitive and you want to keep it shielded from light. And when you're done shooting, you will want, will want to rewind the film into its canister before removing the film and sending it hopefully to the kind folks at thedarkroom.com for developing. Uh, if you wanted to take a selfie and put this on a tripod, this is your... Um, Timer. Press that, right? Press it. Look at that. That's showing you how much time for you to run to your friends and get in the middle of the picture, as we say in New Jersey. Oh. Whoa. So whatever exposure, uh, number of exposures film you have, let's say 36 exposures, keep an eye on your counter. When you get to 36, I, I don't advise going past it because if you, if you cock the film too um, anxiously, you could pull the film right off right off the roll. So when you're done shooting, press this button on the bottom over here. You rewind your film until it's back in its canister. You'll hear it. Open this up. And now you could send your film in for developing or develop it yourself. And you're ready for your next big adventure. That's it. I mean, I just wanted to give you a quick overview and mention to folks that this camera, number one, exists of how awesome it is, how unusual it is for the whole Canon series. And you can get this for under $100. And there you have it. Leave your comments down below. I know what the comment's going to say. Canon doesn't make that camera. <laughs>
if, if I see that comment down below, that means the person, John, didn't watch the video. They're just anxious to get that comment in. Cosina made that camera. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I'm going to be taking names. Mm, that's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll see you next time.